Hi, hi, it's Discoria here, ready to help you with your last second facility event woes. Are you part of the procrastination posse that still needs to finish upgrading your hunger dome and maxing out your zest rewards? <clears throat> well, friend, you've come to the right place. Today, I'm going to talk you through the quickest way to do just those things, as well as some advice on budget clears for taking on the nightmare difficulty of the challenge battle, survival of the hungriest. Okay, first things first. When you're short on time, the most important task to complete is the construction of the Hunger Dome, the event facility, and making sure it's fully upgraded to level 30. This facility provides a 5% boost to both HP and strength for blade and wand wielding weapons. In, and in this game, you really want every boost you can get. So fully upgrading this facility is your first priority. You'll receive the facility for free just by participating in the event and completing the story quests, as you can see here as I click view quests button so by clicking these quests and pro progressing through these quests, you'll receive the base structure for free. So once you've received the base structure, head over to the Halidom and retrieve it from the storehouse. It'll be in here, um, I believe under the production tab. Uh, if not, it'll lead you to which tab it is with, a, um, question, with an exclamation mark. Um, you'll, need to, you'll need a three by three plot to place it. So similar to the um, other facilities units that we've had. Once placed, you can use the chef's special material to upgrade it. So, <clears throat> you, sorry about that guys. You have the structure, now you need the upgrade materials. At this point, I'm gonna help you with understanding where to earn the most of this material for the lowest stamina investment and how you can maximize the materials you earn even further. So let's navigate over to the quests page and into a dash of disaster facility event. The best place to earn chef's special material is the expert difficulty boss battle, Nature's Bounty, a la carte. This battle has very low might requirements, as you can see at 7,000. So as long as you use a moder mono water element team, and by that I mean an all water unit team, you should have no problem clearing this battle, even if you're a beginner to intermediate player. Now, this battle is the best bang for your stamina buck when you want to earn chef special materials, but you can maximize the materials you earn even further by equipping event worm prints that maximize uh, bonuses. So let me navigate over to teams so you can take a look at these. By equipping event worm prints that grant bonuses, the worm print that grants a bonus to your earnings of chef special is called The worm print that grants a bonus to your earnings of Chef Special is called Berry Lovable Friends. With maximum, when maximum unbound, this print grants a 50% bonus, but you won't want to rush to unbind it as you're gonna to want to equip one to each member of your party first. Once you have enough copies to max unbound one of the prints and still equip three to the rest of your party, then you can go ahead and maximum unbound one. There are a few, unbind, I guess I can just say unbind. My verbiage, it's fun. There are a few different sources to obtain this print. You can trade for them in the event treasure trade. And I'm just navigating over so that you can see where that is down here. And they drop fairly frequently in the event, at least they did for me. Once you have a very lovable friends equipped to your party, just start running nature's bounty a la carte and you should have enough materials before you know it. As the event ends in a few days, you're gonna to wanna to build up enough materials to finish upgrading the facility when you lose access to earning the chef special currency. Shoot for about 8,000 chef special. That should be a little more than you need um, to be able to reach the maximum upgrade level 30 for your hunger dome. Okay, so once you've taken care of the hunger dome upgrades, it's time to move on to maxing out zest rewards. There are a ton of useful resources and items that you will receive for completing certain benchmarks, including the almighty summoning tickets we all need to replenish our summoning resources after that run of limited banners. If you have the stamina stored up, it's definitely worth it to try to max out the zest rewards. The best place to earn zest rewards for your stamina seems to be the expert or master or difficulty um, level difficulty of the challenge battle, survival of the hungriest. I've tested them all with the same print setup and earned the same zest rewards each time. So the only difference between them seems to be the might requirements. So basically what I'm saying is, is no matter what level you're at, you will be able to grind for zest equally efficiently, which is great. Also, as it was for earning chef's special materials, 
um, it is for grinding for zest. Um, you can boost your earnings by using event worm prints. Um, there's, you can use either the five star print breakfast at Valerio's or the queen of the knife. Breakfast at Valerio's will give a higher boost to your zest earnings with the four star print queen of the knife giving a smaller boost. Be sure to follow my earlier advice about waiting to unbind your prints. Don't max unbound anything until you can properly equip all the members of your team. These prints can be purchased in the shop for Eldwater, as you can see here. Um, and I believe that Breakfast of Valerios was also available in the treasure trade for the event. Once you've fully upgraded the Hunger Dome and maxed out your zest rewards, congratulations are in order. All that's really left is the treasure trade. If you've grinded the max um, out of the Hunger Dome upgrades and your zest rewards, you should have more than enough. Um, you should have more than enough materials to go into the treasure trade and buy out almost everything that's important. I would say be sure to grab the Champion's Testament, Damascus Ingot, and Augments um, as the primary priorities. Secondary priorities differ from person to person depending on the content that you're looking to clear. Okay. So let's talk budget clearing for Nightmare Difficulty of the Challenge Battle Survival of the Hungriest. I tested this with the following team composition, where I tried to use only four star adventurers, four star dragons, or zero unbound five star dragons, and only OG core weapons. My team composition was Dragon Yule Nefaria, Halloween Odetta, Dragon Yule Xander, and Thaniel as the healer. None of the units were maxed. Um, Dragon Yule Nef had 39 mononodes unlocked, Odetta had 40. Dragon Yule Xander had 30, and Thaniel had 30. As you can see by looking at the equip screen, I used, well, you can't see that they're maximum unbound, but they are. They're, I used two maximum unbound body adenoi, one maximum unbound mini mids, because it comes that way, and a zero unbound nimus for the healer. All the worm prints equipped were fully upgraded and unbound, um, so, you know, that's something to keep in mind. It doesn't take a huge amount of resources to, um, unbind worm prints, but I mean, it can if you're just starting out. I, I don't think the worm prints um, being ma like max unbound, max unbound made or break this run. Um, so uh, I would say, so what do I have for worm prints equipped? Um, Neff had Deer Diary and Forest Bonds. Um, let me just re-equip that so that you guys can see what that looks like. Halloween Odetta had Respl Resplendent Refrain and Levin's Champion. I can always forget what that one's called. Uh, Xander had um, Candy Careers and Jewels of the Sun. And Thaniel had uh, Cleo's Ruse and Give Me Your Wounded. Um, for the weapons, Dragon Yule Neff had Zero Unbound, unbound 5.3 Core Water Bow, Peacock's Whirl. Odetta had a 4.3 Core Sword, Zero Unbound. Dragon Yule Xander had a 4.3 core water wand, and Thaniel had a 5.2 core non-elemental staff. The team's total might was about 19.7k, so based on my findings with this team, you could likely substitute a number of different water units, um, as some of the ones I used I think are limited, um, and you can get the same winning result. My upgrades to the units were very low, none of them have max mana nodes unlocked, um, and I only used core weapons, which all of those weapons take significantly less time and less effort to craft um, as the game has progressed. I would recommend a healer for your comp. Uh, that's just me though. Some people are very good at micromanaging units to improve su survivability. So as you can see, um, I had the fight going on in the background this entire time so that you could get a kind of a closer look at what's going on with the fight itself. Um, it's a pretty difficult fight with, with uh, low budget teams, but it's, it's completely doable. You just have to really make sure that you're focusing on hitting your four strikes at the right time when the enemy's in overdrive. Um, you know, keep an eye on your, um, your AI units because sometimes they like to suicide into things. Uh, I bring a healing skill. That way I can, you know, emergency heal the party. Um, try and save your iframes to protect your team from, you know, dying at weird intervals. If you follow, you know, if you can just keep an eye on everything, um, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be too difficult to, uh, clear with your budget build. I believe in you. Well, that's all folks. We've burned through another facility event and hopefully with this guide, you've sped through the event content faster than the Roadrunner and collected all those sweet, sweet rewards to boost your crafting efforts and prepare for the upcoming half anniversary. 
Updates for me include me still working on the Cayenne face punching guide and possibly content on the newly announced 70MC upgrades for Hawk, Linyu, and Su Fang. If you enjoyed my video, be sure to follow me on Twitch at Discoria Live and watch out for my schedule updates on Twitter so you can hang out and we can all play games together. Talk soon.